Whether they're lost or saved, the Lord does not forsake those whom He befriends. Even if they're going to betray Him. Though Judas was a devil, Christ invited him to suffer. And not just any supper, but the most precious memorial meal of the Jewish history, He invited him to celebrate, commemorate the Passover with Him. Can I say it this way? Jesus went to dinner with the devil. Amen. And Satan sat at supper. Come on. As an unbeliever, Judas played the game of a faithful father. Even at a point that no one pointed a finger at him when they debated who was the devil's dupe. Who had the devil duped? They did not point the finger at Judas. Matter of fact, when he did get up and leave, they wondered where he was going. They had just watched him dip his, uh, in the sock with the Lord and then get up and go. The Lord had said, go and do what you need to do. And he got up to go. And guess what? They didn't even know it was him. There are those who play the game well. There are those who do not know God at all. But are faithful Followers. I pray that none of you fall in that category. But if you do, I'll give you the answer. Repent and believe the gospel. Trust Christ. Oh, as an unbeliever, he did. Let me stop just for a moment. I've uh, often said when uh Others, when people are living in sin or, uh, and they keep on living in sin, I've often said there's something wrong. There's something wrong with that person. But I am very slow to say that person is lost. I'm very slow to say that that person is saved. You say, why? Because it's easy for me to be deceived not know what all is going on. I, I've often said, there's something wrong with them. They, didn't, they must not have got what I've got. Well, let me say this. There's times I wonder if I got what I've got. You say, what do you mean? When I find myself in my mind going places it ought not go, and I, I find my feet starting to drift places they ought not drift, and all those kind of things, and I'm sitting there saying, what? How can a saved man live like that? And the Lord says, walk in the Spirit and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Ah, my friend. I want us to see the compassionate Christ in these next few moments who gave Judas room for repentance even though repentance was rejected. Right? Repentance was rejected. I will give you three main times that he gave Judas room for repentance. First of all, Jesus gave Judas room for repentance before the day of disaster. In John chapter 6, Have not I chosen twelve, and one of you is a devil? Not the devil, but a devil. This is a word of warning to the unbelieving soul. You are a devil, a false accuser, a slanderer, and you are doing the dues of your daddy, the devil. Do not be presumptuous. There comes a time, my friend, if you have been if you are an unbeliever, that you may be turned over to a reprobate mind, and then it is too late. I know not when that time is, but I do know this, that God says that he, gave, he had given them over to a reprobate mind. And when you're turned over to a reprobate mind, I do not know if you can return from that. But I do not know that you can, but I am certainly know that you're going to have a hard time it's going to take a lot of grace. I'm not even 
and serve the person can come back once they've gone that far. You say, why would you not, why would you say that? Because there's plenty who play games and are not real with God. Christ warns the wayward to repent before the day of disaster. Before Satan stops by and before Satan settles in. We find that in John chapter 6. Why didn't they examine themselves then? And then I find another thing. Let me, before I do that, let me, let me say, if Satan is stirred upon you to sin, stop it now. Break off your sin by righteousness now. You say, well, I can't stop it. I can't stop it. Well, let me just say this. Legion, because there were many devils were entered into him. Stop it. All it took was a word from the Lord. So you say, oh, I've got the devil messing with me. <coughs> not just, I'm not just talking possessing, I'm talking maybe oppression. And you're saying, I'm prone to drift towards sin. Stop it. Let the Lord deliver you when you realize you have demonic influences influencing your life. When the fiery darts of the devil are shot at you, and you say, how did they pierce in? How, because I wasn't, didn't put my helmet of salvation on like I should have. How did they get into my mind? How did they get inside of me? Let me say this. Break off your sin by righteousness. Jesus could deliver a man who had a legion. So many that he called himself legion. Because there were many devils in him. Do not say he can't deliver you from one little sin. Judas was one. Jesus delivered that man from many. From many. He certainly can deliver you from your devils. Number two, though, Jesus gave Judas room for repentance. Not only before that disastrous died. But before the dish was distributed. Before the dish was distributed. In Matthew 26, in verse number 21, we will find the Lord at the Lord's table. And here he is, and they did, did and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. He said, Listen, I'm warning you. One of you is messed up. Get right. He's given room for repentance. Satan did not just stir to him. Uh, but he had also stopped by to visit that sinner. He's entered in to visit with him for a little while. He stopped by and started that sinner down a pathway to destruction. He had already been stirred up. He had already went out and already uh, made a deal. But now, Satan had entered in and started working on him to fulfill that deal. <clears throat> when Satan stopped by, when Satan sat at supper, Judas had planned his plot and negotiated his deal. Let me say this, but Jesus wasn't ready to write him off. You can get right up to the edge of your sin. And if you're willing to repent, the Lord will deliver you from the power of darkness. The Lord will deliver you. I'm talking to the saved folks. I'm talking to the sinner. Whoever it is, the Lord will deliver you right up until you do the dirty deed. One of you shall betray me. Let me say you got their attention that day. Every one of them examined themselves. Every one of us has a possibility of failure sure. and of fall. If we allow a root of bitterness to spring up, if we allow, allow sin to start having its way, if we allow Satan to start stirring in our heart, break 
off your sin. He spake straight to Judas when Judas said, Is it I? He said, Thou hast said. Judas knew who it was. Judas knew he had a problem. Let me say this. The Lord is not trying to tell you uh, that you might have a problem. The Lord will point it out right to you. You've got an issue. And if you don't get it right, you will have a bigger issue. Please, 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 sign. Get right with your sin or it may take you farther than you want to stray, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. Sinner, break off your sin. Judas knew that the Lord knew, but he had to hold on to his pride because nobody else knew it was him. He said, I can't go forward. I can't repent. I can't say I'm a sinner because if I do that, everybody will know I was just playing a game. Somebody, I hear it all the time in churches. Well, I knew they weren't real. I knew they were playing a game. The disciples, the apostles who walked with God didn't even know that somebody was playing a game because they played it so well. But you've got such a gift of discernment about everything. Most of the time, it's just pride and arrogance saying, I knew they weren't. <laughs> All you can see is an outward appearance. Come on. You can't see that hard. Come on. That's right. Wasn't it enough to show him that his sin had found him out? Mm. No one else knew but God. So Jesus gave room for repentance. Before the day of disaster, before the dish was distributed, and in Luke we find before the deed was done, he gave room for repentance. After they had eaten the, at the Lord's table, according to Luke, he gave room for repentance. Verse 20. Of Luke 22, likewise also the cup after the supper, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament, in my blood, which is shed for you. And he said, But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth as it is determined, but woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Now, y'all would just say this about the brethren. They examined themselves earlier. Now they're examining each other. But if it ain't me, it must be him. If it ain't me, it must be her. It ain't a her there, but I'm talking about uh, it, it must be this guy, it must be that guy. And none of them thought it was Judas. They were all super surprised even after they examined each other. Even after they, they debated about each other. I will just go on and tell you this. You'll find after you debate about who's the worst, you'll start bragging about who's the best. He said, how do you know that? Because after that, you will find that there was also strife among them of which of them should be accounted the greatest. Let me just say this. That's why John 13 is there. Because after they started debating about who was the best, bragging about who was best, mm -hmm. all of a sudden Jesus said, let me show you. The servant, the Lord is the servant. He must humble himself. Don't think about who's the greatest because they've got an exalted position. Think about who's the greatest who has a humble position. The servant is not greater than his Lord, but the Lord said, I will be your servant. That's where Luke 13 comes, or John 13 comes in. And Jesus was still there. Amen. Satan had sh showed up at supper. Satan had sat at supper. And Satan had supped the supper. And still, Jesus said, I don't want you to do this. I don't, I'm giving you another chance. I'm giving you another opportunity. Satan had slithered in and settled into the sinner's soul. In John 13 and verse number 2, he tells them that. 
Je Jesus washed Judas' feet and, and a second time before the deed was done, gave opportunity for repentance in, in John 13 and verse number 27. He's given them all these opportunities. And no one knew. Even after he took and left, no one knew except for the one who had the broken heart over the sin. The compassionate Christ gives room for repentance. He will, if you're hearing this, He will grant you repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. There is none that are elect to hell. There's none that are elect to heaven. It's whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now we know that there was Judas. And I cannot explain how the son of perdition could be saved because he couldn't. But the truth of the matter is, he is teaching us this because there was not but one son of perdition. There was not but one that was a devil. That is, Judas. But he wants us to know, listen, I'm going to speak to your heart when you start. I'm going to speak to your heart before you suffer. I'm going to speak to your heart before you do the dirty deed. And then let me say this lastly. Even when Judas betrayed him with a kiss, he said, friend, or for a doubt he did not quit being a friend to Jesus. He wanted Judas to know, come unto me and I will give you rest. Believe, believe, believe. My friend, how's that apply to you and me? Even when you mess it up so much that it can't be fixed, he says, Friend, I'm still your friend. Even if you betrayed me, I'm still your friend. I'll be there for you. I'll help you. I'm a present help in time of trouble. All you have to do is come to Him. I do not know where you're at today. But I do know this. There is room for repentance. We will partake of the Lord's table this afternoon. Please, do not take it unworthy, thinking that your sin is not that serious. Jesus has given you multiple opportunities. I believe I preached to some of this last week and dealt with some of this last week, giving us a week to get right. And I'm preaching the same thing again, giving us time to get right. And right before we partake, I will mention his warnings again. Because I do not want anybody to drink damnation on themselves. You say, but I'm saying, I'm not just talking about damnation of the soul, but a damnation of your life. You may have crossed a line and now can become sick or even die if you partake unworthily. Somebody says, I would have better not to partake. My friend, that's not an option. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. If you said, I'm not going to partake, all you're saying is, Lord, you're not worth for me to give up me and my sin. And that's a serious matter. That is a sober matter. God may not point your sin out to anybody else. And you don't have to point your sin out to anybody else. But if there's sin or something that's separating between you and the Savior, please, 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 get it right. Get it right. Are you saved? 
Are you a saint of God? If you're struggling with sin, He will deliver you. He delivered the man of a legion of devils. Certainly can deliver you of your one little sin. Say, preacher, have you ever had something you've been felt addicted to, you felt like you're struggling with, and you just couldn't get away from? I have. And it took weeks of fasting and prayer till God just gave you power. Say, so I ain't got weeks. He's not worried about you getting it fixed. He's willing to be worried about what your attitude is to him. He didn't say you had to stop everything right now. He said if you're wanting to keep on going, you know your heart enough to know that well, you just want to keep on in your sin. You want to keep on in your bitterness. You want to keep on in your wrath. Whatever it might be. Keep on in your books that are not the Bible and Bible related. I'm not even preaching on all that stuff. So. I'm just trying to tell you, he knows your heart. You might deceive everybody else. Please, get right. It's the most serious, serious, serious thing that we be right with God. Our hearts be on our tender. Father, I pray you help us.